Welcome to a special discussion on animal health innovation. Together, we'll explore how a doctor at Purdue University is tackling innovation in a unique way. In fact, some of his previous work may even be linked to something around your wrist or around your neck. Hi, I'm Mitch Frazier, CEO of Agrinovis Indiana. We're a nonprofit focused entirely on growing the ag bioscience economy here in Indiana and really delighted to spend some time with you today. Let's first start with ag bioscience. I think it's important that we first set the playing field. Ag bioscience, as we look at it, is everything upstream from genetics all the way to food delivery. Specifically, it's innovation that happens around one of four key areas, around value-added food nutrition, around animal health, around crop protection and plant science, and around ag tech. Together, these four categories here in Indiana generated approximately $39 billion in revenue in 2018, and combined with our strength in production agriculture in Indiana, that's $13 billion, our total ag bioscience economy here in the state is roughly $52 billion. And with industry leaders like Alanco, United Animal Health, and White Shower Hamrock, headquartered right here in Indiana, Indiana's animal health companies generated approximately $4 billion of revenue in 2018, creating a tremendous platform and nucleus for innovation. Today, we're joined by one of those innovators pioneering animal health innovation. He's an assistant professor in the Department of Ag and Biological Engineering at the Weldon School of Biomedical Engineering at Purdue. He's also a principal investigator at Verma Lab, where he and his team focus on biosensors and microbiome biome innovation. And he completed a Banting postdoctoral fellowship at Harvard and received his PhD in chemical engineering from the University of Waterloo. Amazing guy. I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Mohit Verma. Dr. Verma, welcome. Thank you so much, Mitch, for the kind introduction. Uh, you, I'm happy to be here. You are welcome and just really delighted to spend some time in getting smart about animal health innovation. I really would love maybe to walk into your past a bit more. Help us understand sort of your path to Purdue and specifically where you're focused on innovation today. Yeah, for sure. So um, I come from a background of nanotechnology engineering. So I did my bachelor's in nanotechnology engineering over at Waterloo in Canada, did my PhD there as well. And that's where I started looking into how can we use nanotechnology for um, detecting different types of bacteria. Then during my postdoctoral fellowship at Harvard University, I got a chance to develop low cost user friendly biosensors, which could be deployed in the field, um, those based on paper, for example. And that's what, when I joined Purdue in 2018, um, I noticed that there's a lot of opportunities in agriculture to apply the technologies that I had a background in, one example being these paper-based sensors. Um, and that's what brought me to making these field deployable biosensors that could be useful for um, diagnosing diseases in animal health. And that's where we are today. I love it. I, and I love the work around biosensors, I have to share. Uh, I dug into some of your work, uh, certainly not a PhD myself, but I could understand pieces and parts of it, specifically when you made the linkage to something as I started out today around your wrist or maybe even around your neck. If you would walk us through your work around what's typically associated with jewelry you're using to discover disease. Yeah, definitely. Um, so gold is a very interesting material. Um, as everyone is aware, uh, we are often using it for jewelry. Um, but when you make them into nanoparticles, they behave quite differently. So what you're doing is reducing the size so small that you can't really see single particles with your eye, um, but they're there. And gold, when you make it so small, it changes color. So instead of being golden, as it should in bulk, it actually turns red or blue, depending on how small those particles are. So that's what we actually use. That's what my PhD was on, to use these gold nanoparticles to detect different types of bacteria. And what happens there is if there is no bacteria present, the gold will look red because these are single particles all over the place. When there's a bacterium present, they aggregate around the bacterium and then they change color, they turn blue. So you can actually see, oh, there is a bacterium present. Different types of bacteria lead to different type, different amounts of aggregation, so different types of color. And that's how you can tell which type of a bacteria are, it might be present. We were using it for detection, for example, in contact lens contamination. So if your contact lens is infected and you shouldn't use it anymore, that's what we would, we would use it for. It's fascinating. I love this intersection between human health and animal health. And, and you've been right at the intersection of those two worlds. 
walk us through if you would where that intersection happens and the innovations that you're applying you're finding in contact lenses for human health you're making a bridge into animal health as well yes so um what we've done is we've expanded when i set up my lab here at purdue um i expanded into agriculture so there what we were looking at was bovine respiratory disease so i was kind of sitting next to a farmer in one of those networking events and he was mentioning that oftentimes in cattle um in his cattle uh he gets they get bovine respiratory disease, but they don't really know which bacterium or which virus might be causing the disease. So they have to give antibiotics by trial and error. So they, they and then it fails one or three times, right? So that leads to overuse of antibiotics that leads to the animal being sick for longer um, and therefore reduced quality of meat. What we're trying to do is determine which type of bacteria might be present or which type of virus might be present in and causing the disease so that you can determine the appropriate treatment. We're doing that by actually using um, technology based on nucleic acids, so detecting DNA and RNA. What we're doing is, um, as you would have heard from the um, COVID-19 PCR testing, right? what they do is they detect the virus by looking at the nucleic acid sequences. So we can do the same thing for bovine respiratory disease. What we can do is take a nasal swab, for example, and then from there detect which types of bacteria might be present, which types of viruses might be present, and then from that information, determine what might be the appropriate treatment. Um, right now, you can do this in a lab setting. So you would have to take the sample, ship it off to a lab, take several days to get the result back, and then by the time the disease is already spreading, right? What we are enabling from my lab really is to be able to do it on the farm in less than an hour and make it really simple so that you don't need a lab technician to do it. The farmer himself would do it or a veterinarian could do it. Um, that's really what our focus has been. Dr. Verma, that's incredible. I mean, what, what a potential. It's one of the, the, the biggest challenges that, that cattle farmers, dairy farmers face is bovine respiratory disease. Giant drag on productivity. How are you thinking about commercialization? So early stages today, what is the path to commercialization look like? Yeah, so we've been working on this problem for the past three years, really just trying to figure out, is this possible? And where we are from a technology development point of view from my lab, um, we have the technology and we've shown that um, with my labs, with my grad students, at least, we can go out and do the testing in the field. So that was pretty cool because um, that's great. And and you'll be seeing the results publishing very soon in the next few months. Um, to develop it into a product, I've started a company called Krishi, and we were successful in securing some um, investments through the accelerator, through the Purdue accelerator. Um, and right now, what we're trying to do is figure out, okay, what does the product look like? What, how does it fit into the producer's workflow so that it would be adopted? Um, so it's it's very early stages, even from the startup perspective. But that's our direction. We want to commercialize it through the startup, um, and Krishi gets to license the technology from Purdue and then try to scale that up. Oh, that's exciting. We're talking with Dr. Mohit Verma from Purdue University. You can find more about Dr. Verma online at vermalab.com. Vermalab.com. Dr. Verma, one area that I know you've spent time on is the microbiome as well. Biologicals at large for animal health have been a massive, massive attraction for venture capital, for innovation, for some of the companies that we talked about earlier. Share with us, if you would, the work that you're doing around microbiome and where you see that industry headed. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> so microbiome has received a lot of um, excitement because of its potential again, right? Like you can see everything almost is being affected by microbiome. One of the things that we're doing in my lab and generally in Purdue is trying to figure out which of these factors are actually important and how can we control and design and engineer these microbiomes to have an impact, right? Um, so for example, in my lab, one of the projects we work on is building um, in vitro models of microbiome and gut interactions so that if you want to manipulate certain organisms and do high throughput testing on what effect those organisms or those communities have on the host, you can do that. Right now, it's a very slow process. Even in animals or humans, it can take several months or several years to get those results. What we want to do is make it more high throughput so you can test different combinations much faster. So we're calling these um, gut on a chip type systems, but more high throughput. And as you look at that, Dr. Verma, the gut on the chip is a, is a beautiful analogy, right? It make, makes perfect mm -hmm. sense. The, the interactions then between traditional medicine and microbiome, anything in that space becomes a really interesting sort of nexus, if you will. Exactly. So you can actually connect different uh, different organs. Uh, so you can have gut on a chip and other 
organs as some work has already been done. Uh, but really what we're focusing on, so what are, one of the limitations of literature is that it's still fairly low throughput. So it's all costs okay. almost as much as animal studies, right? So what we're trying to do is scale that up so that you can actually do multiple testing much faster. Um, and yeah, you can connect different organs. So for example, from the respiratory system, we've also been thinking, oh, okay, now how do we integrate the respiratory system? Um, and then if there's connections between the gut and the respiratory system, can we uh, draw those out as well? So that's what we're thinking about. Fascinating. Time for maybe two more questions, Dr. Verma. Thanks again. We're with Dr. Mohit Verma from Purdue University. And Dr. Verma, as you look to the future, I mean, you have been a pioneer in this space by definition, on the front edge, leading innovation. What's the future look like? If we're to look 24 months, 36 months, maybe even longer, uh, what do you see on the horizon? Yeah, so on the biosensor side of things, really, um, I think the technology seems to be more um, kind of mature on the human side of things, but there's so many opportunities on the animal side of things, right? So what we're trying to do in the next two to three years really is first of all, tackle the bovine respiratory disease, but because it's nucleic acids, it's DNA and RNA um, for which is all life really, right? So you can actually target any disease in, in pretty much any um, species. So we want to go after other diseases and show that this is a platform technology and apply it to other problems, um, for example, in the swine industry or um, in uh, aquaculture, right? You, you, the possibilities are kind of endless. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're, we're actually tackling different problems, um, showing that it's a platform technology, even for food safety, right? You can use the same kind of approach for food safety. And I think one of the big things that we're doing is also making it much simpler. So you can do all these things in the lab right now, but no one's using it because it's so slow, it's expensive, it takes so much water. But we're trying to reduce that barrier by bringing the lab to you, right, wherever you, you are. Um, and that's what I'm hoping at least in the next five, 10 years, that's where we'll see, you can have, you can make these tests more cost effective, you can test for different types of diseases and different types of animals, um, and then help guide treatment in the case of diseases, right? So a lot of the treatment, not just antibiotics, but even anti-inflammatories, you want to know what is the condition, right? A lot of times we just don't know. The symptoms look all the same, especially for animals, right? They look all the same, um, but we're hoping for more precision treatment uh, with these technologies. That's really our goal. It's fascinating. Last question, Dr. Verma. This may be the first time that some are meeting you, hearing you, seeing you, and, and getting a chance to look at the work that you're doing. It's fascinating. If you could, what would you share with those that are new, maybe thinking in animal health, looking at Indiana, looking at Purdue, uh, help them understand what the opportunity is here from a talent perspective, from a connection to Purdue perspective and a connection to industry perspective that you found? That's actually a really good question because I myself am new, like relatively new to Indiana and Purdue. So before, um, before coming here, I didn't know too much about it. Um, but then once I came to Purdue, what I realized was that there are so many opportunities in agriculture, especially because Purdue has a very strong College of Agriculture and College of Engineering. So I'm kind of in, in a very good situation. I'm in both colleges and it gives me a lot of opportunities to take these technologies and put it in the hands of real people, right? Um, uh, which is not really possible in a lot of other places. Um, so getting to getting access to producers, to veterinarians, to animal scientists, um, that, that's been really strong at Purdue that um, I would not have known. And there's a lot of um, networking opportunities uh, that are available through uh, Purdue events, through Agronovus as well. Um, and that's how I got into it, right? That's how I learned about, okay, these are the problems. And because I had the technology background, I was like, oh yeah, I can use this technology in this problem. Um, so those opportunities are really excellent um, in Indiana and, and Purdue. That's, that, that's exceptional. Dr. Verma, it is a real delight to finally see you and talk with you. Your work is uh, is really exciting. The, the work that is make, that you're making possible, bringing the lab, that big vision to bring the lab to every farm field feed lot uh, on the planet is a, is a big one. And I, I, I'm absolutely delighted you're doing that right here in Indiana. Dr. Verma, he's the Assistant Professor of Department of Ag and Biological Engineering at the Weldon School, a Biomedical Engineering School at Purdue University, and the Principal Investigator at Verma Lab. Remember, you can find him online at vermalab.com. That's vermalab.com. Dr. Verma, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Mitch, for having me. It was a pleasure. Uh, Agronovus is delighted to bring you discussions and insights with industry leaders like Dr. Verma as we work to fuel growth across Indiana's ag bioscience economy. Together, our focus is to add $4 billion to the ag bioscience economy 
by the end of 2024. And we'd love for you to join us on the journey. You can find us online. You can interact with us on social. You can subscribe to this podcast, all from agronovisindiana.com. That's agronovisindiana.com. And on behalf of the entire Agronovis team, thanks so much for spending some time with us today as we dig in together to innovations in animal health.